All right, ladies and gentlemen, we do apologize for getting into the match a little bit late here, but we are going live right now into the match. I believe this is directly live, as I actually got the IP pretty late. I thought it was a new one today, but apparently it was the same one as yesterday, so that's uh, a bit my mistake there. But we're going right into it. It's Fnatic versus Peter here in a best of three to start things off this evening. Fnatic already up 2-0, picking up the first two rounds there, including the pistol and the second one. And as for Peter, well, they're down. It's going to be on Mirage here to start things off. My name is Blue. I'm just going to be solo casting this first match. Uh, second for the second uh, set. I should have somebody joining me, hopefully, so you will only have to deal with me alone for this first one. And then we'll get right back to it. But going into this third round, we can see Fnatic going for a very quick tank face crack. Going to try to hold things up, but unfortunately can't pick anything up. Pronex is going to be able to dispatch him. And as the players roll right into the site here, we can see his face. Try to get a response to that, but Crim's picking up a nice shot over there to shut him down very quickly after that. Now... Pornex picking up an additional one over here on a JMQ. And as for the rest of these guys, they're pretty quick clear out here. Spades did actually pick up a MAC Tepid through, took down a Wolfmeister, and you can see that he got some of these players down pretty low. Flusher, JW, Crims, and even Pronax, to be honest, all getting down pretty low. So if he can move back in here and pick some of them off, that would be good. But he himself was also pretty low too. And also no armor sitting on his Spades. Gonna make that uh gonna make that a little bit harder to work for. So unfortunately, that's not gonna come out very well for them. And Fnatic just swiftly cleaned things up there with a 3-0 start for themselves. And get them right into that. So now Fnatic with a good lead. They'll go into the gun round here. And as for Peter, actually, again, I unfortunately missed the second round as I sort of just loaded into it as we saw it. But it looks like they actually stretched themselves a little bit too thinly there. And Waterfalls is going to make the interesting choice to just go with the scout here in the first gun round. So it's going to work out initially as he gets some nice damage on the Pronax. Same thing gets returned over there onto Olafmeister. But he actually picks Olafmeister off there as he trying to cross back over here on a cannon. Oh, Flusha. Oh, no. He's going to end up shutting down Pronax. That takes him down. Thankfully, all the other kills they managed to get still leaves Peter in control. But now, as we can see, Ubik gets himself out here. He's going to manage to trade that back over onto JW. And now they bring it into a two on two situation. Plus, you're looking to wrap that back around. A good flash goes onto Ubik, but thankfully, he's safely within the smoke. So, we're going to take a little bit of damage, but as Flusher rolls right back out, he's going to shut down Face Crack. And Crims will find the final kill as well to take down Ubik. And there you go, Fnatic. A little bit of a bump in the road there with the Keem kill coming out, but they're still going to be able to pick up the fourth round. Nice and easy. Some good damage coming up onto them, as we can see, with a couple of their players going down. to just two left alive, but uh, still really not enough here to pick up the round. So Peter now have to go back onto an eco for themselves here, and Fnatic will be able to continue buying. But still, like I said before, not really in a safe spot as of yet. Crims is doing an absolutely fantastic job, as is JW, but beyond those two players... Um, they are going to be looking a little bit weaker here, and obviously we'll be looking at potentially, at this point in time, this could change, of course, with this eco round, but for the time being, we'll just be looking at one more buy from these guys. There's going to be Waterfalls picking up an AK after he picks up a kill there, and he's going to try to respond to it, but again, just Fnatic with a shooting gallery, one by one by one. Spaze actually ends up being the final player left alive here to bring this into a one-on-two, and he's got a pretty good advantage about it, too. His big problem, again, is the fact that he's got no armor to work with at this point, and Flush has already spotted him, so Crim is going to run away. He's going to get himself onto the B-side start the timer. Spaze, though, with a nice headshot. Shot, shut down Flusha, and now it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Even health pulls for the most part there, too. His base a little bit lower than Crim's. But again, that armor factor is going to be a big deal. This Molly has to be absolutely perfectly placed, but Crims is going to take the battle right into his face at this point. He knows he might be around that corner, and there we go. Crims with the forward position catches him off, and that's going to shut down Spades, give Fnatic the fifth round. A very close one once again as they keep it close, but Crims, unsurprisingly, is going to be the final player that ends up surviving for another time here on Fnatic's side. As we can see, with everybody else consistently going down on Fnatic, he's the only player that's only died one time out of these five rounds so far, so he's probably the most consistent player, whereas... They've been, they've been kind of throwing their lives away a little bit. Fnatic is playing a super aggressive T side, going right into these sites. Not even using a whole lot of utility, to be completely honest. The smokes come out here or there, but for the most part, they're just running right in, trying to get themselves into the sites and clear it out and get the round scores up as quickly as humanly possible here. So now, in the sixth round, we'll see them slow it down a little bit here. Mid control being taken, and Pronax will sneak through the doors here, coming up the T ramp. And we'll be able to shut down the first target. That'll be face crack. Ubik, unfortunately, reveals himself a little bit too early. So Flush and JW are going to be able to tag team him down. Spades, though, wraps back around through ticket box. He's going to be able to catch two. As we see, for some reason, there, JW pops out while he's completely flashed. That's going to be his own death going his way. His own op kill coming up from Waterfalls, too. And now Pronax again has to be formed for his team. He's already up to two kills. Crim sneaking up over here, too, to get himself a, a better position on the jungle. Thankfully, they got the smoke to support that. But now JMQ is going to try to flank around. He's going to be able to what? He's going to be able to catch Pronax completely through the box as he takes him down there and now he's gonna pop right out looking for the shots over on a crims but crims is safely was inside the crims is safely was inside the palace right now he's gonna pop but he finds one looking for the second one himself he's gonna try to take down jmq but as well we're gonna have the smoke coming back in and that's gonna restrict access his flash too doesn't really hit him and he goes right for it but he pops off and again the clutch from crims it's like the third one in a row now that he's done and he'll remain still with only that one death 
Not even leading the team in frags too, interestingly enough. Everybody else is sitting at- uh, we still have Pronex, I should say. Still sitting up at 8 frags at this point in time, but... Crims is still down at 7 there at this point, so unfortunately, uh... Despite all these clutches he's pulling off here, not the- not the top man on the board. He doesn't get the cred for that just as of yet. But again, from Fnatic, they, uh, they piece it together here. And are, I mean, their economy, when you look at it, I'm actually amazed at how well it is. Just, I mean, Crims is no surprise, obviously, but for JW, it's amazing he has as much as he has there. Especially with the considering he just got an op ball for himself there, so... He's gonna buy that up. Ubik gets a nice push there through the, uh, through the t ramp and is gonna be able to pick up the first kill with Olaf Meister. He'll look for the response, and... He's gonna be able to find it, but at heavy cost to his own life, dropped down to 16 HP. And the rest of Fnatic 2, shifting away from a B-centric push and going back to the basics in terms of what's been working for them in these pre previous six rounds as they just go back over here to try and go for a push under the end of sight. And there's gonna be Crims, catches face crack as he tries to fall back up to that ticket box position. Ubik is hitting up on the pallets here too. The nade's not gonna connect onto him and he actually picks up the opening kill here too for the CTs as they try to move back in. He's gonna have to remove from that and Crims again quick on the trigger. Shuts down waterfalls directly after that. Olafmeister is still sticking around in middle but I'm sure he's gonna come in through connector in a second and that could catch some of these guys off guard as Ubik pops himself out a little bit there. Now they obviously should know where he is if they didn't already. And I'm pretty sure he knows this too, so he's going to fall back to get himself in within Firebox, which is a safer position. You can even see here too from Fnatic, they're not exactly se secure on, on pushing in for this position just as of yet, so they're actually going to move away from it. JMQ is going to start to rotate towards the B site. The problem is though is that Oof, Olafmeister almost going to manage to catch JMQ, but he ends up surviving that encounter with 19 HP. And remember, Olafmeister 2 was sitting at like 17 when he started that fight, so it's been unfortunate. And now JMQ is going to try to sneak in Lonesome because he's been killed. You still have uh, still have JW at large, but the problem is, I think JW is looking for this player, and now JMQ. He doesn't have a kit to work with, so it's going to be the full 10 seconds, but I don't think JW's going to have enough time. He's taking the long path to get himself over here, and there's no way in hell he's going to be able to get to it in time. If he gets himself on a cat, this is going to be great, but three seconds left on the clock. Here comes JW right now, and he's not going to be able to find it in time. Oh, just a couple seconds too late there. And JW, the big mistake of hunting for that frag on the A site there, underestimated the rotationary ability and the overall game sense, I feel, of Peter. And JMQ was able to rotate in there, get himself out of harm's way of Fnatic, and a bit of a mistake on the part of Fnatic. He's going to give the fir first point onto the board here now for the members of Peter as they bring it up to 1-6 to six now. And thankfully for Fnatic, like we talked about before, their economy was in a semi-okay position, so they're going to be able to buy it for an additional round. JW might actually be good for another one after this one, but uh, right after that... They would be put into a pretty bad spot when have to save directly. JW takes the aggressive path here inside of the apartments now. Finally, a direct push in the apartments too, where we just haven't been seeing any of that at all from Fnatic at this point. They've just been going straight forward with an A take and playing towards middle with one or two players too. But now after he screws around with the apartments a little bit, he's going to fall back going into underpass. And as for Face Crack and Ubik, they're still holding on to the A site here. There's Waterfalls getting himself into the action too as he picks up a third kill now. And Fnatic just can't seem to work anything. All the players are going to rock in, but Waterfalls holds that too. He picks up an additional kill, trades out for an AK, and now Flush has got nowhere to go. Go. He's the final player left alive for his team, and he's got to walk right back here. Even Ubik pushed through now. Might even catch him before he can fall back on this. And there's going to be actually JMQ. He cuts him off back over there by the T-spawn. And Peter again, pick up a second point there. Fnatic, fortunately not the best push coming out from those guys. Uh, JW's opening push over there into the apartments didn't really do anything towards middle. They tried to kind of go in, but I think we now finally are in a situation where Peter basically caught on to what Fnatic has been doing. And they've been able to adjust for this now. Regardless, however, this is a really great start for Fnatic in this half. Six points onto the board, even if Peter is just getting themselves right back into this game. Uh, Fnatic can even pick up, you know, two to three more rounds, this is already going to be a good half for them and would be uh, something to build upon as they go into the CT side there. And they don't really have too big of a reason to be worried just as of yet. But again, Fnatic shifting the game plan up a little bit, going for more aggressive middle control this time. Three players in top mid, at least one more working his way down through underpass and a potential fifth going into either the apartments or again, working with that additional teammate in underpass here. But JMQ again is going to find the opening shot. Spaze jumps out, picks up a kill, but Olfmeister gets the trade. Unfortunately, though, Waterfalls is able to trade the trade and now Ubik picks up another one here too from the side of Peter. It's going to be JMQ that pops right up and they just execute it once again a very clean round from Peter and now they're figuring out how to work the shutting it down Unfortunately for Fnatic, it seems it's moving too too quickly and Peter has found out the way they just take it nice and slow They get themselves into close They get themselves into their positions to counter out the pushes from Fnatic and they constantly find themselves in the right spot here And for Fnatic the trouble brews that they can't seem to win a lot of those duels I don't think they're expecting a lot of these players from Peter to be in the positions that they were planning themselves in and with a situation like that, obviously, that's going to be another kill that easily goes by the way of the members of Peter there. Walking right out towards middle. That's going to reveal the opera, obviously, but will they get some damage on it? Not enough in order to trade the kill. And now Spaze and Phase Crack picking up those two additional kills. The touchdown nade comes in from Spaze to take down Pronax once again. And drop it into underpass. He's even going to get an additional kill. Shuts out JW from within underpass. Prevents him from doing any damage. And now Peter just sits two points away from tying things up with Fnatic now. 
Very, very close in this matchup once again. And Fnatic, the money is going to be rebought at this point. Back up to the AKs after saving in that previous round here. Should have a decent amount of what they need. No op, unfortunately, on the JW, but we haven't really seen too much of that coming into play yet anyway, so it's not the biggest loss in the world. They try to change it up once again here, just in terms of what they're bringing for. It's a default A split, so there's nothing, there's nothing really surprising there. Uh, but with no presence in Palace, they're going to be allowing Odeek to open up this big flank onto them. However, Olufmeister finds an opening spray down over here on the waterfalls to get the way in. Now the player's inside of Connector. Three of them trying to work their way in from that, but they're having some trouble with face crack still pressure here. Thankfully, that allows them to get through, but they don't really know what's happening in jungle as of yet, so JMQ, he's going to get himself up. They smoke it out. The Molly's going to come in here, and that may force some relocation. We can see that Pronax and some of the other players, they're forced to walk up the steps. Flusha holds the angle there as a beak was lining up that flank from before. Doesn't pan out. Beak did get the one grenade kill. Basically, it's a post-mortem death, or a post-mortem kill with his nade, but that's all he's going to be able to pick up there. And now Fnatic get themselves back onto the saddle. They're going to get another round in their pocket. And as for... The members of Peter now, thankfully due to a nice streak that they had going for themselves here, and a very clean one as well when you take a look at it. Four or five players left alive in the previous three round victories they had. Uh, they're actually going to be able to go for a double opposite of themselves. Waterfalls and JMQA will be the ones going to pick those up. And a nice amount of utility behind that as well. But there's going to be Waterfalls. Holds the mid-connector, shutting down Pronax. More coming outside of the smoke here now. Face crack picking up the first kill from within inside the site itself. And there's JW finding something for Fnatic now. But they're going to need to trade out more than that. They're still down a man. And more reinforcements for Peter are going to be on the way. Ubik with another op shot. Shuts it down. Flush tries to push out of Sandwich. He gets dinked, but he's going to be able to pick up the kill. And Face crack rotates in while he also picks up that additional kill in the JW to solidify the round for the members of Peter. Now they're right back into it too. And this is really going to muck with Fnatic's money at this point as well. Uh, uh, we look at theirs, you see two players, JW and Olufmeister specifically, are in a good situation to buy, but for the rest it would be stretching it, so I imagine uh, they're going to take this round pretty light, and that's indeed going to be the case for most of their members here. We've got a couple, we've got one AK sitting on Olufmeister, and he was one of the players that could buy, but for pretty much everybody else it's going to be Deagles, and Pronex will just rock with a P250 for the time being. And now a four-man push over here towards the apartments too. No action in another pass, just as of yet, just watching out in case we see a push from Peter, which... The time being, we're not going to be having that. However, Peter, very good at catching on to the push from Fnatic. They do it to start to fall back a little bit more here. To potentially put themselves just outside of this push angle. And this is going to, to be completely honest, this is going to be a very brutal attempt from Fnatic to get themselves into the site here and get themselves out of harm's way. But as they try to creep their way into here... We can wait and see, and there's going to be Spaze actually loses the opening return. Olufmeister with the rifle leads the charge, and now this is going to re-rotate JMQA. This is good, too, because if a lot of the players have forced their way off, JMQ also going to miss his opening trade shot here with the op, and then JW creeping up, going to catch Waterfalls. He gets caught off there by that smoke, and that's going to allow them to finish him off. Face crack in the window, though, still holds strong for his team for the time being, and he's going to shut down Pronax. Now more are going to be on the way out, and Nade comes their way, but it doesn't connect from Fnatic's end, and Olufmeister is going to start to push forward here, too, looking for the additional kills onto these guys. JW lined up, can't get anything, though, with that smoke that's sitting just outside of the window. And Obik's gonna push forward. He picks up a kill, but Flusha along with Olufmeister tag team. Two more kills. Obik finds an additional one on the JW, but Olufmeister in the corner. And that rifle is doing work, man. Shuts down two more kills. And Fnatic once again back onto the saddle. Get themselves an eighth point. They're already gonna be leading here going into the next half. So it's a great TF from them regardless. But against a team like Peter, when you're looking at, you know, the, th the two-time major champion in a row here now for Fnatic. Going against uh, a Russian team at this point. That to the general public, many people may not know of their name, let alone their skill. You would want to think Fnatic would have a much more secure lead at this point, so it does potentially open up some worries as we also go to that second half as to what Peter may have in store just for their T side, not even for their CT side as we've seen. They've been able to turn this around in a very good way, and we'll just have to see what Peter can work towards now in the second half. We still have two more rounds to go here in the first as Fnatic. Once again, going to split themselves up very heavily at this point. Go for a pretty rapid mid control here. And then more than likely they're going to end up solidifying that into an A push here with three players moving into connector. One more is going to work his way out of Palace. An additional one coming out from T-Ramp there too. As Peter does have three in sight. A pretty default hold from those guys. But they don't have any mid presence at all. So when they do come in from connector, it's going to be y'all being held there. Waterfalls is going to rotate himself into the window room now to try to hold it better. But Olufmeister already inside of connector. That picks up the kill. And now Waterfalls is going to rotate back out to defend with inside connector. Thankfully, get some good shots there on Olufmeister himself. So that's going to be able to take him down nice and quick. But now Flush is out from the palace. And now the take is on. They're going to roll right in here. And they're still not even aware of what's going to be happening here. Coming in from the window room too. Or coming in from the ladder. I think that is as well. There's going to be additional player pushing in, and that could catch Waterfalls completely off guard. But for the time being, Peter's players are going to hold on. And you can just see here, too, JW 
inside of that ladder room that we already talked about before, trying to sneak his way in. The bombs rotated off, so they're trying to force the full rotation at this point, but JMQA is not going to catch on. JW, though, again misses his opportunity. Not going to be able to catch the shot there over on a JMQA, and now the uh, the bomb carrier here, Pronex, has to take a duel versus him before he can even collect this bomb, and there's not enough time. He's going to drop him, too, so there you have it. That's going to end the round. Unfortunately, Crims would have tried to pick up JMQA, but he gets behind cover, gets himself into a safe position, and Peter... Because Fnatic played that far too slowly, escape with another round for themselves, and Peter again with a strong hold onto the site. Fnatic, this slow play just is not working out for them, unfortunately. They gotta go back to the quick plays. That's that's what was working out very well for them. But even that started to falter a little bit there too. So it seems that Peter has really solidified the defense, and Fnatic is gonna have to innovate a little bit here to try and figure out what they're gonna do on this last round. And even on this last round, they're really not gonna have a whole lot to offer in regards to offensive. They've got the op and the two AKs, but they're down on two more pistols. However, that's not gonna stop them. They come and they pick up two kills right from the get-go before waterfalls can even respond. And even with that, now JW is working with that op. He comes right in, picks up the shot into waterfalls. That's gonna shut him down. And now these players are working their way in. Pardon me for one second. All right, my apologies, guys. I did have a sneeze real quick. But going back into this now, Olaf Meister is going to press right forward, tries to take down James QA, and he does succeed in doing so. So Fnatic bounce back. They pick up the final round at least and still end themselves on a very satisfying T-sided Mirage half. 9-6 to six in their favor. And now we have to see what exactly Peter can do. Now, I should mention here for Peter specifically that we've often seen teams before um, where their CT side has problems, and it often takes them a couple rounds for them to figure out how exactly to work against their opponent's defense. And that might have been the case there, just because you can sort of see, again, and like a lot of cases here, Fnatic go extremely strong right from the get-go, and then they start to turn it around in the later portion of the first half there, where they pick up quite a few additional rounds in the cells, and then it bounces back and forth once Fnatic figure things out. Um, with that being had, the T side is often not as hard, and it can sometimes be the opposite situation, obviously. So for Fnatic here, if uh, if we can see them, if we if Peter have already been sort of been rehearsed on what they're going to expect here from Fnatic going into this half, then we could see a strong start from Peter, and they could get themselves right back into this game as the T-side does tend to be easier for some of those newer teams but to start things off it'll be a one-for-one -one trade the Beak's gonna come in though and they overwhelm him along with Facecracker to try and make it a second kill for themselves and there's a third that comes out from a Beak now he's gonna take down Flush it and it's JW and Crims to work a two-on-four retake not really gonna be feasible unfortunately as we take a look at both JW and Crims sitting off the sites at this point JW working his way in from Palace but at a very predictable position they haven't spotted yet and Crims gets the one tap too JW comes in he finds a second one so they're not done just yet as they work their way back in. They've got a kit, too. And JW is going to find an additional kill. He's going to pick that one up on a JMQ, and he just shuts it down. Three kills for JW, and they walk right into the site. Krim still with plenty of time left to defuse the bomb there with a the kit, so they're going to be able to grab that. And Fnatic, it looked like it was completely into the hands of Peter, but it gets completely stolen away by the members of Fnatic. They're going to pick it up. Ten points onto the board for them now, and that just shatters everything from Peter that they could have hoped to grab here in the earlier portions of this, so... What a great pickup there by JW just to save the pistol round for the hands of Fnatic. And now they're right back into this game. They're right back into the lead as well. And now they can grow it even further here as Peter. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to respond to this too heavily on the anti on the on their eco rounds, I fear. Now they're gonna go for just a very light buy up here. Not even upgrading the pistols in most cases. Two players are gonna be sticking with their default pistols. Three just go with P250. So they're taking it very light here to go for that third round aggressive buy. And Fnatic already realized this as they've gone for four rifles, but it doesn't even matter. Look at it, JW again, along with Flusha. Krim's getting a piece of the action there, too. They just ripped them apart, and that's another quick round for Fnatic. But here comes the buy from Peter. They go for the third round aggressive buy. Unfortunately, though, with them not being able to get any damage onto these Fnatic players with no kills coming off, we're still going to be looking at full rifles on the table for these players. Yes, they'll be a little bit weaker, but just look at the utility buy-ups here when you compare it to what Fnatic has. Fnatic has absolutely everything they need. They're going to be a little bit light on Molly's, granted, but the CT side is making this crucial, so can't on the T side. Molly's really only going to be good if you can absolutely predict, like, a five-man rush or something, and you can melt them as they're going going at apartments or an angle such as that. It's much more better to, for the T side to have those as they can force relocations on CT members and whatnot there. So now they're going to be sitting up and that P90 from all of my can still play to do plenty of work as well. He's not in the best position for it, I would have to say right now, but we can still expect someone to be done. And there we go, face crack. Peeks out a little bit too early as that smoke and nut bloom just as of yet. So JW is going to be able to spot him, shuts him down. And already the members of Fnatic are going to be once again a kill up on these guys from Peter. Peter's still split up pretty heavily at this point too, so they're taking a lot of individualist 1v1 duels. And I don't know why GoTV wants to stick on to, uh, wants to stick on a JW behind a smoke there, but Fnatic just seems to be shutting this down at this point. JMQ is going to be the final player. Left alive, way back over here, just outside of the back alley. Trying to work his way over here towards upper middle to retrieve that bomb. 
but I'm more than certain that at this point, Fnatic should have this under their control. Just gonna split themselves up as they don't really have a whole lot of intel. JMQA really hasn't done anything as of yet, in this round at least. Um, so he, they don't really have a whole lot of intel as to where he's playing from, so they just go for the default split, gonna try to catch them at the usual positions. And to be honest, Peter's gonna have to make a move here pretty shortly if he is gonna go for this one. It does seem like he's creeping forward as to if, as, as to say, I should say, that he is going to go for this push. And, you know, he kinda has to just because you look at the money. He's only gonna have $50 at the end of this, so if he takes the risk on saving and loses that out, he's basically gonna be even worse off than he would be if it was the first round's pistol round. So he might wanna go in here and try to die before the round ends. Three seconds left, he's gonna press forward, looking for some kills here. Gonna get one, gonna try to get the second, pulls up the knife, but oh no! Now he's gonna stay alive, he's stuck in this corner, Pronex can see him and Oh my goodness, I don't know how he survived that, but JMQ, JMQ, apologies, JMQ manages to make his way out of that round. Still with that AK, still with the armor and everything, he's not going to be able to buy up any utility at all this time. But still, picks up that kill, can't find the second, but I think the fact that he ran in, grabbed the kill, basically ran right into two of their faces, got a kill, and then managed to hide Hocus Pocus style, sitting behind the pole there at that point. And unfortunately, there wasn't enough time for Fnatic to get behind him and catch him. So he's going to make it out alive with this one. And now they have another AK going into this round at the very least. Whereas the rest of the team, again, they go back down to P250s or Tech 9s. As unfortunately, with the money buyout coming there previously, they're not really going to have a whole lot this round. JMQ, le JMQ leads the charge here on the way into the site. Pronax with a good response to open it up. But JMQ finds the trade. Looking for Olafmeister down the cap area there too. But they do get some more damage onto him. And that's going to bring him down. At the same time, Waterfalls is able to press forward and get a kill into JW. And JMQ... Now let's just sit back over here behind the uh, behind the behind the bench, which unfortunately that's gonna get traded out by Olafmeister as well. They're gonna shut him down. Krems picks up another one, and now it'll just be your beak. I think the bomb is planted for him. Obviously, though, without having armor or anything, it's gonna be a pretty easy shutdown for Olafmeister. So there you go. That's gonna take him out. We can see a couple guns being swapped out there by the Fnatic players, and again from Peter, some good intentions, some good strategy coming out here, but unfortunately with a round like that, uh, overall not much to be expected. That AK was doing some good work. Um, I just don't think his teammates were able to cover for him as well as he was expecting. So he got stuck behind bench and was basically getting unloaded upon by pretty much everybody that was on Fnatic there to try and take him down. The cat play was a bit horrendous. The cat play was a little bit hard to work with there with Olafmeister slowly whittling him down. And because of how low he had gone, he himself couldn't pop out to do more work with that AK from the players that were pushing in from market. And that was really their only anchor for that round was going to be that AK that they had in play. So without that, and with everybody else just being on PT-50s or Tech 9s, basically no armor, it wasn't really going to be too good. But here comes Olafmeister, pushes through, now has partial control of the bomb, but Waterfall gets a response, so we still have a little bit of a battle here. And I'm not 100% sure if all of my sisters actually spotted the bomb and oh he just gets himself out of dodge there for that op shot too as that's going to be waterfalls pushing in towards this one peter is still trying to line up a push and jw as well there catches him as he tries to bait out the push and that's going to work great because waterfalls tries to push forward in order to uh to get that kill into Olafmeister, but it's not going to pan out at all. Now the rest of the members of Peter have to fall back because they need to resecure this bomb. Olafmeister's pushing, looking the complete wrong direction though. So Beak is going to be able to get the uh, the off angle kill there onto him, and that's going to shut him down now. And it'll be tied up for the time being, and Peter should be able to go back to their usual plan. Three players still getting ready to push. They're going to shift it over here towards the A site potentially, though, as they work their way over towards that. And New Beak is just going to sit here to make a crap load of noise. JW even working here through under the underpass at this point, trying to see if he can catch some of these players off. But nope, Ubeek jumps down, catches JW as he was sitting at only 18 HP after that exchange earlier that he had going with Waterfalls. So that's another player from the CT side is going to be down. And now the final two have to split themselves up one for one here. The bomb take is going to be happening, though, on the, uh, on the uh, A site at this point. I'm not even sure Crims realizes this. As now the nades are going to roll, and he's going to know for sure at this point, but they're already creeping up, and they're already getting ready to go for the plant, and also sitting right behind in a second here. Crims is going to be Ubeek sitting over here in the mid-cubby, getting ready to push into these guys, but the rotation from uh, from Fnatic is also going to be fairly fast as well. So Pronax is going to be able to get himself into this position to go for the retake. The flash comes out. He can't find anything initially, and Ubeek has yet to make a move yet, which is quite surprising. I'm pretty sure he's waiting for them to go they're gonna jump up, and unfortunately for uh, fortunately for Rubik here, to be honest, he's not even needed. Face crack just finishes off the final two players. JMQ is assisting with that a little bit there too. Rubik was basically just an insurance policy in case they did come through, so he could be a bit of a surprise addition there, coming back in from connector, get some of those players off guard. So Peter, although they have dropped quite a few rounds, that's gonna be the first one they pick up in this half, and now they try to get themselves back into the swing of things here. Fnatic already picking up their fourth round here in this one, and now only needing three more in order to close out this map. But still having a whole lot of money because of, for in some cases, just how clean some of those rounds were. So they go for under the rifle buy. No op, unfortunately, on a JW this time. But again, the same symptoms that we saw in that previous half. Not seeing a whole lot of work coming out there from a JW, which actually, it's been surprising considering he's leading on frags. But with the op, I just, I just don't think we've been seeing it as well as his rifling. 
Beak and some of the members of Peter are going to try to push forward to get themselves on this B site. You can see JW and Pronax are going to be here to defend it from within side of, from within side, just outside of the, of the, uh, the apartments here now. Try and stop the push from happening and Waterfalls along with Beak both taking a couple hits here that are coming out from Fnatic. They know that there's a heavy presence from Peter sitting in here, but the question is just how many players are in here and are screwing around with this area at this point. The smoke fades and now they can make the push, but with all the nades coming in here, they should draw the rotation from Fnatic. It's going to be a little bit slow as they just start to rotate in now, but Peter is slow as well. They're still stuck inside, so that nade just rips them to shreds. And oh my goodness, what a disaster now. Spaze is the only player from Peter that manages to get a kill, and Fnatic just absolutely shut them down from within inside the, the apartment there and we could just see from Peter I don't know what the hell happened but they had all the nades they needed to get themselves out of the site but they walk out into the room with all the open windows and and they just they just freeze and just sit right in there a nade comes in it just just destroys them rips them to shreds brings almost everybody down to about 50 HP and Fnatic just have to pop right out and rip them all down finish everybody off with the two to three hits each and they're all dead men so there you go Fnatic gets another round and again keep in mind only 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 uh, all four of their players four to five of their players I should say keep themselves alive and well in that matchup only Pronax I think is gonna end up going down as a result of this one and might even been someone else there JW just might have rebought because he's been sitting pretty good and now the rest of Peter they're gonna go for a direct take on the A site here too but JW still holding it strong Flusha coming in for a little bit of supporting Crims back over there by ticket box too it shuts it down space is gonna fall as the final player and Fnatic are now gonna be a match point I don't know what happened for Peter they had a great round just a few rounds back but now it's all falling apart at this point and Fnatic are gonna have an absolutely huge advantage as they pick up their 15th point here, only one more away and should easily be able to clean things up uh, from this round forward here on Peter's end. As Peter are just going to be looking at a Tech Thine armor buy-up. Really not any mollies or anything else either, just smokes to try and work a take potentially, but we've seen that smokes really don't make the difference here from Peter as of yet. And already Krim starts it off, picks up the first kill. GMQ will look for a response coming out of Palace, but Flusher rotates in onto the steps to try and stop that from happening. He's going to bring him down to just 10 HP as GMQ starts to fall back a little bit more here now. And Fnatic, they'll hold a stronghold here on that out A site. They already know it's going to be pushed towards there. You can see here, Waterfalls is going to try to push forward. JM, JW picks up the first kill, but Crims looks for the response there. Finds it. Flusha finds an additional kill. And now everything for Peter falls into the hands of Facecrack with only one smoke. And four players still alive from Fnatic. More than likely, this map is going to be concluding here in this round. And Fnatic will be sitting... The final score of 16 to 7. Keep in mind, guys, by the way, this is a best of three set, so that we're not going to end things here just as of yet. We'll be going to our next match in just a few minutes, and that's going to be over on Cash. Keep in mind that this first map was the pick from Peter, so unfortunately, that is going to have some bad consequences now as we go into the second map. Not exactly sure how confident Peter is going to be feeling as they really, really struggle to pick up the rounds on this T side. Unfortunately, the CT side was much, much better. So once again, folks, we are just going to take a very quick break here really quickly while we're transitioning between the two maps. And as soon as we are ready to rock and roll in the second one, we'll bring back to you more of the Star Ladder I-Series Season 14 European Group Stages 1 right here on Twitch. We'll be right back, folks. So stick around.